I want to talk about Marcel's thing. Now, when I had met her, she was only around eight years old at the time. She was always quiet, always submissive. Um, she was a very, very shy girl. She always kept to herself. Uh, and all the time that I had known her, I don't think I had ever heard her speak a word. But I also didn't know her that well. Let me just add that as well. Now, all these years later, uh, up until the point where LaRue and Marcel were first caught and arrested and put into custody, um, the first time I'd heard about it, I was shocked. Um, these two kids that I had known all those years ago had murdered someone to steal for money. Leroux, when I had met him, he was also, he was very young. He was around 10 years old. But now, just to backtrack a little, when Leroux and Marcel were introduced to Cecilia Stein, these kids were bombarded. And when I mean, and when I say bombarded, that is an understatement. Because at such a young age, they were... Uh, forced to watch gruesome horror movie after gruesome horror movie, non-stop. Um, and then on top of that, they were subject to Cecilia talking about all these ritual and occult related topics, non-stop. And then, uh, I'll get to Miranda on a, another audio, but... Miranda herself was overly obsessed with everyth everything regarding Cecilia Stain and also uh, everything regarding the occult. Um, I, I would probably think that she was obsessed with the occult because of Cecilia Stain. Her obsession for Cecilia and over Cecilia was actually, to be honest, it was mind-boggling. It was outright crazy. Um, she basically lived and breathed Cecilia. It was really weird. Since almost day one of having met Cecilia. But now, going back to LaRue and Marcel, these kids were bombarded by movies, bombarded by Cecilia constantly talking about the occult, about rituals, about many, many, many gruesome things and then they were bombarded by their mother with the same things and with regards to their mother these kids would then be bombarded while they were in their own homes with the same topics non-stop these two kids had no choice no escape in having to hear about murders, having to hear about rituals, having to hear about sacrifices, having to hear about all these gruesome facts non-stop. Um, it was utterly ridiculous. And to add to that, these kids would also have to witness Cecilia supposedly being attacked by the occult on an extremely regular basis, uh, which I will also cover in another topic. But it was... I mean, as an adult, it was very hard for me to digest. It was hard to watch. It was terrifying, um, petrifying, uh, and many things. But I, I honestly don't know if the kids were ever with Cecilia on a high day, um, because on those days she would primarily supposedly be attacked the worst that same night. I think from memory that the kids were there or at least one of the kids were there at least several times during the time period that I was best friends with Cecilia. So these kids, their worlds had completely been disrupted by the most outrageous, horrifying things since meeting Cecilia. There, is, there was no escape for them at all. They didn't, I think their only escape was 
to actually just go to school and be a normal kid. But other than that, when they went home, they were bombarded. And immediately as soon as they got home, uh, or even not even getting to home, Mirinda would pick them up from school and take them straight to Cecilia. <laughs> these poor kids had no escape whatsoever. And I mean, even as an adult, it was enough to disturb your mind. I still battled to shake some thoughts and, and scenarios, even when I had to explain videos that investigators and the head prosecutor had of what happened on a high night. Watching that video so many years later, I cannot begin to explain what went through me. It uh, disturbing, um, horrifying, terrifying. Is your stomach turns? Um, everything in me wanted to run. In that moment that I saw the video, I had completely forgotten that Cecilia was guilty, or is guilty, should I say, of all these indespicable crimes. <clears throat> In that moment, I went back to those moments of when I witnessed her on High Nights. And in that moment of watching that video, I wanted to run. So I can only imagine children of 8 and 10 years old, how they must have felt. And having to witness this on a non-stop basis for all these years later. And even while I was friends with Cecilia, Marinda began to move closer and closer to Cecilia. Um, at first, the first move I, I remember, she was a couple of blocks of, she moved to uh, being a couple of blocks away from Cecilia. And then she moved again and she got closer. And ultimately she ended up living above Cecilia. Uh, she, when I say obsession, <laughs> she took it to a whole new level. But... These kids were living and breathing in a non-stop horror movie since meeting Cecilia. And when I found out that these kids were guilty of murdering someone just for money, even though I was shocked, I wasn't surprised, to be honest. I mean, these children had been hopelessly brainwashed. They had always been quiet and submissive, really, really good children. They always did what their mother said. They always did what Cecilia said. Uh, they were amazing children, to be honest. And, and having taken all of this into account of what I knew of them in the past, up until finding out about what they were guilty of, it didn't surprise me. Their life had been completely molded by their mother forcing Cecilia into their lives. And, I mean, even while I was best friends with Cecilia, LaRue and Marcel would often sleep over at Cecilia's house. Um, just them. Uh, either Marcel or either La just LaRue, or sometimes both of them. They were left completely alone with Cecilia. And... The things that she did to them were oh, was unbelievably wrong. I mean, towards the last two years, at least, of having been Cecilia's friend, I remember her telling me that, I mean, I go to backtrack a little, these two children were inseparable, they were close, they had such a strong bond. But towards the second last year of knowing Cecilia, these children were at war with each other. They hated each other. And Cecilia would tell me that Luru is angry because of X, Y, and Z. Basically being Cecilia had fed them nonsense or fed him nonsense uh, about things that Marcel says about him, thinks about him. Things that his own mother thinks about him and says about him. But she reassures him 
that to her he is amazing and valuable and so on. And then the same happened with Marcel. Marcel was angry uh, with LaRue because also of X, Y, and Z. Being, she hated him because he supposedly thought and said these things about her and the same with her mother. But again, Cecilia reassures her that to her she is valuable and irreplaceable and so on. I watched Cecilia, well not watched, I heard Cecilia relate to me how these children were basically built up against each other because of nonsense lies and drawn closer to her and become more loyal to her because she had built it or put it this way she had completely demolished every relationship that those children had with anybody in their lives to rebuild it to where only Cecilia was the 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 one that cared about them only Cecilia saw value in them only Cecilia saw that they were important and so on and this already happened like I said in at least well I heard about it should I say in the second last year of knowing Cecilia now I don't know if LaRue or Marcel or Miranda had ever said anything negative about any one of them so in the moment when Cecilia told me I couldn't exactly say why are you lying to them because I didn't know if there was any negative talk but looking back and seeing how Cecilia did the same thing the exact same thing to every member in her group she lied to each of us about each of us so that she would destroy every single relationship between each of us and restructure it so that we would all merely just get along with each other not talk to each other really but get along with each other just for Cecilia's sake because she was the one that saw him saw us as important as valuable we all ended up in the same type of scenario except the only difference is LaRue and Marcel were just kids we were still adults and as adults it already divided and conquered each and every single one of us completely I mean before I met Cecilia Rhea and I actually had a a fairly good friendship but by the end of it it was shattered we didn't want to be around each other but we tolerated each other for Cecilia's sake and only after having left Cecilia did Rhea and I finally talk about things and only to find out that everything was a lie uh, so as adults if it can destroy us like that destroy our relationships what chance does a child have so these children LaRue and Marcel were completely isolated to Cecilia even more so never mind being bombarded with all this all this information about the occult and rituals and murders and watching movies and everything that goes along with it so to find out that these children had committed these crimes for Cecilia it doesn't it doesn't shock me in the least bit but what I wanted to specifically talk about right now is Marcel I don't know why Marcel in specific uh, that she became like this maybe it was because she was younger than LaRue or maybe she experienced uh, fairly different things to LaRue along the years of uh, having Cecilia in her life but during investigation the investigators were able to 
speak to LaRue um, quite easily, which I'll get to on another audio. But with Marcel, from what I had heard, they had deemed her responses to be like that of a drone, of an empty vessel. They said it was as if you would see the person, but the person did not exist. There was a body, but there was nobody home, basically. Um, if she ever said anything, she was just repeating what she had been coached to say by her mother and Cecilia. But the majority of the time, she never said a word. She was willing to lay down her life for Cecilia. She was willing to stay in silence about absolutely everything just for Cecilia. And to top that off, the investigators stressed that it was incredibly strange how Marcel had absolutely no emotion about her. It was as if she had been completely reprogrammed. Um, her whole personality, her actions, her responses, even her emotional responses, and even the responses in her eyes. I mean, there are many people that can lie, but the eyes don't lie. But with Marcel, there was no response. Her eyes were dead. There was no movement. Even when truth or facts were shared with her, and when evidence was shown to her, there was not an inkling of a response even in her eyes. She would sit there in silence. I mean, the investigators, when they gave LaRue the option to testify and supply evidence in exchange for a shorter sentence in jail, they gave the same to Marcel. She did not want it. Her response was also just not there. She, there was nobody there. You could see her body, but it was as if it was being controlled by an external source, or like the investigator said, an, an, a drone. It was very disturbing to hear. Um, I had never encountered anybody like that in my life, nor could I ever imagine encountering somebody like that, especially when this person was faced with such hardcore evidence and there was absolutely no response, not even in their eyes. And the investigators battled for months and years on end to try get Marcel to say at least one thing just one thing and as far as the investigation went Marcel had already been tied to numerous crimes but as far as I know what the investigators had found out was that Marcel hadn't actually committed any murders herself so her sentencing would be significantly shorter because she was part of the planning and part of the other crimes other than murders. But these investigators still tried tirelessly to get Marcel to say something because she was, like I said, merely a child when she was introduced to all of this. And with me, when I kept hearing about this, I knew what had happened to me all those years ago, how it affected me, how Cecilia managed to change things in my life and try to reprogram my thoughts and everything that went with it. I had a very, very too close to home idea of where Marcel was at and what Marcel had become. And also having known her since she was eight years old, or knowing her when she was so young, should I rather say, I desperately wanted to reach out to her. I mean, LaRue had already started speaking up, so I wasn't too worried. But 
Marcel needed to know the truth at the very least. Even though she hadn't accepted the deal for having a shorter term in jail, she needed the truth. She deserved to know the truth. And I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to go and see her. It wasn't safe. But what I eventually decided was to write Marcel a letter. Literally a letter from heart to heart. Marcel knew me. Marcel knew the person I was. Marcel knew a lot of things um, about me. And so I wrote her this letter. It was a very, very long letter. And in order to give her this letter, it had to go through various channels through advocate to advocate to get approval and so on. And this process was always ending up a dead dead end. I don't know which advocate or which person was the one that ultimately kept saying no at the end of it. But eventually towards the very end of the case, the very last few months, just before the judge was gonna gonna give his sentencing for everybody that was left on the stand, Marcel was finally given the letter, and I was told that she was given the letter, and I was informed that the judge's sentencing was postponed because because Marcel pleaded to be on the stand. She actually wanted to be on the stand. She wanted to talk. But nobody, and even as far as I know, even her own advocate, did not know what Marcel was going to say. And I can in all honesty say that when Marcel got on the stand, I was dumbstruck. Um, I don't think anybody was ready to hear what Marcel was going to say at least in terms of the crimes that she had actually been involved in. I don't know if, I, I, I think and I would assume that the investigators had told her that she's already tied to X, Y and Z crimes, which were not the actual committing of murders, but just being part of the planning. So her sentencing would be less. But Marcel actually confessed to murdering. I was dumbstruck. Completely, and I still am. Um, I get shivers down my spine that she knew that she, if she didn't speak about actually having committed murder herself, her sentencing would have been shorter. But I honestly believe that when she read the letter, and I was also told that Marcel had finally cracked once she read the letter. But I honestly believe that when Marcel read the letter, she had a she had a real honest realization of all the lies that she had been fed by Cecilia, by her mother. I'd even told her the lies that Cecilia had fed to her mother. And in my letter, I had supplied her with evidence for so many things. Because I knew how Cecilia would justify things. Like I said, the letter was very long. Um, I supplied her with photographs. Uh, I supplied her with Bible scriptures because Cecilia would even justify it saying that God says this and God says that and, and it's in the Bible. So I gave her Bible scripture after Bible scripture. And I honestly believe that when Marcel read the letter, she was truly sorry because she honestly realized that she had been so badly fooled into believing all this nonsense since she was a child. I mean, when she could have 
served a shorter life sen- a shorter sentence in jail if she kept quiet about actually having murdered people she rather chose to actually confess that she murdered people and she knew she would have a longer a longer sentence in jail and at the same time she knew the risk there was even worse than that for confessing this on the stand her mother and cecilia would be out to try and kill her while she was in jail i mean cecilia and marinda had already tried to kill larue while he was still in custody um a couple of times so marcel knew that by testifying the full truth of what she had done not only gave her <laughs> the rest of her life in jail it also put her life even more at risk where she would be in complete confinement uh, never mind being surrounded by other criminals to be wary of but her mother her own mother and cecilia would be aiming to try and kill her every single day whether she was in the same jail as them or not they would still try and make her way and um i mean like i said they already tried to kill the rue while he was in custody and he wasn't even in the same holding and you know he wasn't in the same holding as cecilia and marinda so even with marcel being in a completely separate jail from her mother and from cecilia her life is still at risk and i know she is petrified for her life i know a lot of people will not understand how much my heart goes out to leru and marcel i mean after all they had done these heinous crimes they had committed these devastating murders there is that is the hardcore truth and i know leru as well is incredibly regretful over that but at the same time i knew these kids when they were so young i knew what they were subjected to constantly um i knew what happened to me i knew what happened to ria i knew what happened to other members of cecilia's group if cecilia can affect adults that much what hope does a child have she takes something or someone so young and innocent and vulnerable and remolds them into her own personal slave basically at the end of the day to do whatever she wants because they wholeheartedly believe that she is the only one that is actually worth being loyal to and she knows more than them and also at the same time if they don't do what she says she will kill them because i mean even leru's own mother held a gun at his head during one of the murders and said if you don't kill i will kill you his own mother these children had no escape from being brainwashed at such a young age and being trapped by all of us completely because even if these children had managed to escape from cecilia and their mother cecilia would manage to find them i mean how many people i mean so many people had gone into hiding because of cecilia because of fearing for their lives and there was merely only four or five people left on cecilia's to kill list she had killed every one of those people that were either trying to expose her or just merely trying to run for their lives so and i mean all those people had jobs they had money they had avenues of escape 
but she still found them and she still killed them. So what hope did Marcel and LaRue ever have? No money, no car, no avenue of escape. They had no family other than Cecilia. They were completely isolated to Cecilia. It was do or die at the end of the day. These kids were fearing for their lives and completely brainwashed. I don't know if I'll ever be able to explain it fully, but I don't honestly think that anybody could actually truly understand what any one of us actually went through unless you have gone through it yourself. It's one thing to explain it, one thing to hear it, one thing to try and understand it, but to have lived it is a whole other scenario on its own. And I know for the few that have escaped and are still alive, if they listen to this audio, I know they will understand what I'm saying. They will understand the full extent of it. And um, I know they too more than likely feel uh, they more they more than likely their hearts also go out to Larue and Marcel. Just kids subjected to all of this, trapped, brainwashed, controlled, so many things. They really had no hope, and to top it all off, being in jail still doesn't mean that they are safe from Cecilia and Marinda. Both LaRue and Marcel are still constantly fearful every single day that their mother and Cecilia would have sent someone to try and kill them.